What's going on everyone? It's Trey Neal here with Trading Stocks and today's video is a very, very, very interesting one. It might be something that you guys didn't know exists and that's automated backtesting in Thinkorswim. Backtesting is the number one thing you need to do as a day trader before you will ever become profitable. You need to have a real proven backtested edge over the markets, a real back testing strategy with a proven edge over the markets before you're ever going to start making money in the stock market. And it could be a really annoying thing to do. A lot of people are going back manually through trades with an Excel sheet and whatever, but I'm going to show you guys a way in Thinkorswim, the, the active trader software from TD Ameritrade uh, or Charles Schwab. They're in the midst, I think still in the midst of being bought out by Charles Schwab. But anyway, that you can code and automatically backtest a strategy. Now, um, if you're excited for this, go and hit the like button. Hit the red subscribe button if you're new. Let's just jump right into the chart here. It's already pulled up. You can probably tell what's going on here. I'm gonna go over a strategy with you all. So you're, you're also gonna get a strategy in this video. It's a pretty simple strategy, but it does have, over the last 30 days, I haven't continued the back test past the 30 days. The strategy itself isn't the point of this video. So please, this strategy is very simple and it's still quite young. I need to go back test it even further than just 30 days, um, but it is proven profitable. It is a profitable edge in the last 30 days, if that means anything to you. But what this is, as you can see here, it is automatically, it's now, I'm about to say something, it's automatically taking trades. This will not, actually trade for you thinkorswim does not have a way to algorithmically trade for you that's not what this is doing this is not actually taking trades for me during the day it's just back testing them meaning it's just going through and showing you where the strategy would be buying would be selling or would be shorting or would be covering um, and then this floating pl so what you're seeing down here at the bottom is the gain loss on the shares that you are trading. So over the last 30 days on the one minute chart, this strategy has made over $5,800 on the S&P. Now that's really cool because if you don't know, if you're if you're just looking, uh, the S&P has actually been getting, uh, I have all kinds of stuff on this chart here. I should have cleared this up before we started. Get the trades out of the way. Those are some practice trades I actually took using different strategies, uh, by the way. But the S&P has been just going down slash choppy sideways mess for the last 30 days. So the fact that this strategy is able to pull money out of this market is actually really cool. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how to get it all set up today. So the first thing I want to do, go to studies, edit studies. You guys have all probably seen this screen. This is where you're adding your MACD. This is where you're adding your Stokes. Uh, all that kind of cool stuff. If you go over to this tab though, there is a strategies tab and there's all kinds of out of the box strategies. So the ones that you see with this lock here means that they're automatically there. So you'll instantly be able to go look at your strategies tab and, and mess around with some of these strategies that are built in uh, and immediately be able to do that. But what I have done is I have created one. If you hit this create button, it brings up a code and what you are coding in, the language you are coding in here is called ThinkScript. It's basically Java, basically JavaScript. Um, it, it's it's Thinkorswim's own language, uh, and they have a whole uh, kind of language book. If you Google stuff, Google High of Day, ThinkScript, it'll show you like kind of the parameters and the inputs and the values and stuff of it. Um, if you don't know how to code, uh, this is going to be a little bit more difficult for you, um, but you will still be able to find things on the internet to be able to mess around with. And look at what I have coded here. It's not hard. I do have a degree in computer science, so I do know what I'm doing a little bit. I graduated in 2015. Uh, and now I do software quality assurance. It's been a while since I've really had to code, uh, so I'm nowhere near the best coder. And one once again, this is something that was so simple for me to put together. Look, this is it. This is the whole code right here. And then these are just out of the box how like how the system actually takes the trades. But all this strategy is doing, it's buying when the candle, the current candle has a low that is lower than four candles ago. And then, oh, and it's over the 210 SMA. And then it's selling when the high of the current candle breaks the high of the candle from eight bars ago. And it's pretty much vice versa that uh, for the short. Shorting high eight bars ago under the 210 SMA and then covering low up three. You might say, Trey, 
why the 210 SMA? Like, doesn't everybody use the, the 200 or the 9 and the 20 or the 50, like the, the basic ones? Yeah, that's the beauty of backtesting. I can come in here, immediately change this. Look, I, I lost 500, or I lost $300 because I lowered that. I came in here and I have done that. I've messed with those numbers. I have messed around with these numbers. Um, let's see what happens when I do that. I, I'm down $400 from where I was before. So, uh, you know, oh, crud, I don't remember what it was on. Was it on four? Okay, it was on four. <laughs> uh, but you, you can, this is the beauty of backtesting. You get a strategy involved like this. You can start messing around with those numbers, fidgeting around with those numbers, figuring out what works the best. And for me, the, with this strategy, uh, the four, the eight, the eight, the three, and the two tens here are what I have found pulls the most money out of the last 30 days. Uh, so once again, just showing you what all that was, it's in the strategies tab. You can mess around with the ones that are in here. Uh, you probably get a good idea just clicking. If you just click on some of these, you know, just click on the little picture right here. You can see the code that's within the uh, ones that are out of the box that might help you kind of understand how the code is. Uh, or you can go to create and write your own code. I will have the code for this strategy in the a, a pinned comment at the, in the uh, top of the comment section down below. So scroll down to the comments. Uh, it'll be easier for me to throw it in there. So if you want to copy and paste and then mess around just to kind of practice with this yourself, this code will be down there in the strategy as well. Uh, another thing I want to show you guys is the floating PL. So this is just an out of the box study. You just, you just grab floating PL, add selected, uh, apply. That is what's going to throw that down there for you. That's what's going to show you your wins and losses. Now, out of the box, what it's automatically doing is it's just doing 100 shares at a time. It's entering 100 shares. It's exiting 100 shares. It also will not take other trades if you're already in a position. That's just how things script work. That's just the, that's just the global setting. How do you change your global settings? Right here at the bottom of your studies list. You've probably never noticed this button. Click global strategy settings. You can allow multiple orders. So let's set it to two orders of 50. So it's going to trade still 100 contracts max, but it will be able to take two orders. So if it's already in a position, it'll be able to enter another 50 contract position because I've set that there, obviously. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, sometimes this thing is fidgeting. You have to do this. Uh, now, if we apply, yep, now it did it. So now you can see it's doing 50 and then sometimes buying, you know, sometimes it buys more. Uh, but as you can see for this strategy itself, that's actually a uh, kind of relatively largely worse than just getting in the full 100 shares at a time. But that is how you can change that. That's how you can change the number of shares you're taking, the amount of entrances you want to take kind of from that global setting there. Um, and I just want to show you guys some, some other things too. Now, this strategy is meant for the one minute. This strategy is kind of fine-tuned for the one minute. But whatever you go to, so if I go to the five-day, let's just put it on the 90. I believe that's the longest it'll let you take five-day. You can see it's automatically just running this strategy right against whatever time frame you have up. Let's just flash out to the daily real quick. It's running the same strategy right against the same time frame that I have pulled up. It's really, really, really nice. Another thing you can do, you can right click this arrow, you can click show report. This is gonna show you every trade that it has taken. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll be able to see your total PL, the total orders. It's important because you don't want a strategy that's taking a ton of trades just to make a little bit of money or have a little bit of an edge. Um, so that's an important thing as well. You can also export this file. I've exported this to CSV before and uploaded it to Excel. I can't find a way to format it properly. Um, if any of you guys have a great, a good way to format these CSVs or figure one out, let me know. Um, but I haven't been able to find a great way to get this CSV file formatted into Excel to actually work with. But that's probably something I'll continue to work on in the future and continue to figure out. Um, you can also run this. So let's just go back to the one minute. Uh, let's put it on the time frame that is profitable, that has the edge, uh, just so I can flex the, a little bit. Uh, but you can also, I mean, obviously, I, I'm now on Apple. It's up $1,600 in the last 30 days on Apple. Let's go to Tesla. It's up $23,000 $23, in the last 30 days on Tesla. Let's go to PayPal. PayPal's been getting crushed in the last 30 days. This strategy, still up $964. If you were just holding 100 shares of PayPal the last 30 days, you're getting dominated. But with this strategy, you're doing okay. You're doing okay over the last 30 days, right? Um, so that's another thing. You can just run it against any ticker, any time frame. It all automatically adjusts. So that's really, really cool as well. Once again, wrapping up the video here, studies, 
edit studies, strategies, start to look into and expect more videos on this channel as well as I come up with new strategies. Uh, I will I will show them to you guys. I probably even perfect this strategy. It probably needs more work. This is a very simple state right now, although it is working pretty well. Uh, once again, still just over the last 30 days, I need to go back and back test it more. But expect more videos on this channel as well with coding help and strategy help and new strategies coming to you guys as well. Um, so yeah, that is automated backtesting in Thinkorswim. It's kind of a 101, kind of a letting you guys know it exists type video. And then once again, we'll continue diving more into it down the road. So if you're excited for it, hit the red subscribe button so you don't miss any of those videos. If you enjoyed this video, if I taught you something new, if you're going to try to use this for your own automated backtesting, hit the like button, show me that. And yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign out of this video. I will catch you all in the next one.